Okay, another one of those days where the sun never bothered to get up this morning. We're about midday actually, and uh, up at Abrechen, which is a gorgeous mountain, little mountain bike circuit, and also a lovely walk. And you're just out in the wilds here, it's beautiful. So I thought I'd bring a little selfie drone with me and review it for the channel. There's a little bit of breeze coming through the glen, and then it's coming up the ridge here, so it's actually blowing around. Uh, and let's just see how this gets on. Now, this one's got GPS on it, it's got surround, it's got all sorts of tricks and bobs. It's got a tilting camera, which is really nice, I think could be good. And the lens looks quite nice on it as well. It's obviously a copy of a huge, major, very expensive one, and it's coming in, you know, uh, I forget what the price is, but I'll put the links and everything down in the description for you. Please don't be comparing this to the thousand pound Mavics and, you know, all the other ones that DJI do. If you want that, if you've got that sort of money and you're after that sort of level, buy one. Yeah, th these are never going to match up to it. What I want is something I can dump in my bag. If it gets damaged, something happens to it. I'm not actually broken the bank. I'm not going to be too upset. And if I get soaked when I'm out on a walk or a mountain bike, I'm not too worried. Uh, if I have an accident, fall off and smash smash my bag and something happens to a thousand pound Mavic, I pro I'm gonna be well upset. So that's what I'm that's the way I'm looking at these things anyway. So it, it does actually feel pretty good in the hand uh, and uh folds out uh when you fold it back in I think it's back ones in first then front ones yeah that's right uh and then as you can see we've got I call these floppy floppy dog ears <laughs> the grandkids I think named them that's what these are uh they've got these the props on there and then all folds out really nicely and then you actually get a pretty decent sized quad got leds at the front uh, which are really bright i just had a quick look at this indoors i haven't flown it yet um but i always just have a quick run through at home got a micro sd slot in there and i've tried a 32 gig in there and it works fine uh you've got your proprietary battery in the back here which is 1200 milliamp hour and it's a two cell and i'm going to show you how to charge this a lot quicker than the uh, charger that they give you when i actually go into uh back to the studio and then we'll uh, do the summary on it you got uh, uh you could have it like that but the lens uh where the lens uh tilts uh the actual little motor in there would probably touch down so just flick the little legs out and that just gives you that extra little bit of protection there uh, the lens does tilt up and down with uh, uh and you can do that remotely from the transmitter from these two buttons here uh, which is really rather nice because uh, most quads at uh, this sort of level or around this sort of price you have to push them down before you take off and sometimes you want to change things as you're going around sort of thing got leds on the top here but i haven't tested whether that is actually battery worn in or whether or not it is just leds quite often again this level you get sort of that it's just a, a some pretty leds really to be honest and there is red led at the back which is really quite dim that that's going to be the thing to line it up on if you need to line it up with anything and the plastic's got that sort of rubberized plastic feel to it uh, here uh, and the arms are uh, that real sort of plastic plastic if you like <laughs> uh, but this bit feels quite slick and everything and then onto the transmitter it's that normal sort of one copy one again uh, fake antennas and uh, the, the usual sort of run sort of thing I don't know why they put these on but they're there if you want to try and look <laughs> look like you've got something that you haven't um, like I say nothing's marked on it which is a real pain actually especially when you're trying to review lots of different quads as well your phone will slip in the bottom here as well it's got a big sort of uh, area there that it will sit in quite happily and then on and off here you've got some leds along the top here like i say this tilts the camera up and down this is auto takeoff auto land we can prime the motors down and out we can calibrate the gyro down and to the right uh, and we've got emergency stop on this side we've got uh, compass calibration on this side i think that's what it said we uh, in the manual it says this is take a photo and it says this one uh, at the back is for turning the gps off but when i tried it at home just to make sure the camera was working this started and stopped the video but the, it does seem to be a bit of a rocker one so i'm wondering if the front bit this bit here will actually uh, turn the gps off because I, I quite like to try it without the gps on if i can this one here puts it into surround and it's got a really nice it should have a really nice one i've tested a load of these surround ones lately they've been getting really good on the cheap gps models and this is our three different uh, speed rates here we've got a return to home button just simply click that in and then we've got a headless mode button here and i'll show you all the sort of controls when we get up and away okay so i'm going to turn the corner on first of all like i say you get flashing leds it goes really fast initially uh and then it goes down to a nice sort of slow pulse and then you turn on the transmitter now it says in the instructions that you have to go up and down to bind it but you don't uh, that will already be bound as soon as you just turn the turn it on you get the beep beep and it's bound and there we go prove that it does go to press the emergency stop there so 
sticks down and out and you can prime the motors if you want to and like i say these front leds are really viciously bright they look really nice uh, the quad will set up a wi-fi hotspot and we're just going to log on to it and the way we do that is just go into your settings i did try this at home so it did actually work and it should pick it back up in a second so it's going to scan there we go and wi-fi 1080p and then it'll have gps and loads of numbers behind it uh, it'll automatically log back on certainly out here there's no other wi-fi hotspots i can assure you <laughs> let's go back to the home page and then it's lwfpv is the actual app and there we go we've got a beep off that i think that's saying it's ready for oh i think the beep means that the gps uh, it's picked up enough satellites because uh, the red led on the back's gone solid okay i'm going to press the uh, calibration uh, button here and then we've got flashing LEDs warning us that we need to uh, calibrate the actual uh, compass on it. So with this one, we just simply pick it up and then we rotate round. And as you can see on the actual phone, we get compass calibration uh, in the X axis. So it's going around like this. And then we get a beep to tell us that it's going into the Y axis. So it's pointing upwards and just rotate round. Yeah, and we're all done. Just trying to find somewhere where they can sit level. <laughs> there we go. That's better. Like I say, if you want to uh, calibrate the gyro on it, it, I think it auto calibrates. On most of these quads, it tends to. But I'll just show you. If down, down and right with the slicks, you get flashing LEDs and a beep again, and that confirms that it's all done and all ready. And then let's just check this camera for pointing up and down, because that's one thing I haven't done. There we go. That's already pointed fully up. There we go, and you can see it's pointed down. It doesn't got much movement on it, but it's actually quite, looks relatively smooth. Yeah, not too bad, actually. All right, let's give this a go. Like I say, it's a little, little bit of a breeze, which has actually dropped down a little bit now, but once I get up, up there, there'll be quite a bit of a breeze coming up the glen, I'm sure. You could start and stop the video from up here, but if you do, it will record it with like just video one. Uh, if you record it using your app, it will record it with today's date and the time you actually took the shot. So uh, I find that a much better way of storing my files. And also you get a count up. If you use the video on here, it will it will not do a count up for you. So. Okay, so let's... Oh, you have to prime the motors. That's it. And then you just press auto takeoff. Well, you might as well just give it some throttle and off it'll go. That's holding pretty well, actually. Whoa, a lot of vibration going on there. There really is a lot of vibration. I don't know if the, YouTube, the camera will pick that up. These arms are moving like mad. Yeah, I wonder if I haven't quite got it <laughs> set up right. Let's just take that out of the air. I wonder if they haven't clicked in position. I don't know if you could actually pick that up. It was really... I mean, the props don't look damaged or anything. No, they are clicked in position. Well, that was really vibrating around like mad. Well, this front arm wasn't moving there. So, well, well, we'll see. No, I'm still getting... Can you see that vibration? Well, you must be able to. Look at that. Yeah, that really is vibrating. I might have to change the props. Which is a real shame. And actually, yeah, there is a... Whoa, there's a little bit of a wobble going on there. Yeah, it's affecting the actual video on it as well. Mm, oh, well. I can only review, review what I get. I might change the props, actually. I'm not sure it's the props. <laughs> I will get airborne properly in a minute. If I can sort that out. No, I don't think I can, actually. There doesn't look anything wrong with those props, unless there's just one that's uh, been manufactured slightly wrong, and it's sending that massive vibration through it. I'm going to fly it, and if I can get it sorted later on, we'll give it a go. But this is what I was supplied with, so let's see how we get on, shall we? So this is in low rates. I can even hear that thing pulsing, actually. So it's really, that's a full stick input. I'm really not doing... Not too anxious or anything. That's into intermediate rates. That's in high rate, so it's not an anxious fly by any means. I wouldn't have expected it to be to be actually. That FPV's not bad actually. Really cool. 
Actually, I haven't altered the altitude, and that is <laughs> exactly the altitude it came past that a second ago, so I would say that was pretty good. Oh, yeah, that GPS is definitely working there. Okay, let's have a, uh, do a quick selfie. Yeah, I can see a wobble on here, um, which will be affecting it, I'm sure. So I'm just going to pop that off, just going to take a quick selfie. Well, that's pretty cool. I'll we'll just do a selfie up on the ridge here. That's cool. And you can see the, the quads at a slight angle. Not a lot, but it is a little bit. So there's a tiny, tiniest bit of breeze now. It's actually not too bad. So let me show you this uh, surround. So I'm going to start that off again. I was like, this is what really what I want the quads for. Just do a nice surround if I made it up onto a peak or a mountain or anything. So I'm going to start it off above my head. I'm going to press surround here. I'll press this button here and then it's gone up. It will rotate and it will run out. I actually prefer doing them on the um, controls on here rather than using the surround system on here. I think there is one on the app, but it's really not what I would be too bothered about. I'm going to bring that down. Well, hopefully it should be picking me as more or less centered. Yeah, so it's not too bad. And then all you have to do is you can just control what speed it goes at. So if I just do that, it will just go very gently round and just do a really nice surround. You can speed it up a bit if you like. And actually, I find these quite amazing, really. And especially where there's a breeze coming across and compensating for it is quite good. Pretty good. You can swap it and go back the other way if you like. So just simply go back the other way. There we go. I'm just going to do a bit slower this time. You can alter your altitude, obviously. And also you can push it away from you. So if you push the stick away, you make a bigger circle and a bigger surround. Which I actually, I like this technique. I think it's a really nice, smooth technique. And obviously, just do you could just do the opposite as well and bring it in closer to you as well. So that's really quite smart. And that's at full tilt. That's doing quite a good job. I like that. And obviously, we've got altitude as well. And when we go up, we can then just tilt that lens down. Let's have a look at what that lens does. Hey, no, it's doing a good job. Yeah, we like that already. That's cool. Okay, I'll. Uh, oh, headless mode, sorry, I don't usually fly headless mode. I'll show you how it works, sort of thing. So basically, uh, let's just show you all the controls if you're brand new to flying. So this is your throttle, that makes it go up and down. When you let go, it's got altitude hold, so it'll stay at the, at the altitude. Obviously, GPS hold as well. And you can see the wind on it coming up that ridge, so it's actually holding position really well. Push this one like this, it rotates to the right, that's called your end. Push it to the left, it rotates to the left. This is forward, so that's the quad going forward, backwards, right and left. And it's not point to the compass, so you can go at angles, you can do whatever you like. We've got headless mode on this one, so simply press this one. And then we get flashing LEDs just off the back there. And I'm not too sure, oh there we go, so it's that way I bound it. So it doesn't matter what way the quad is facing, if I push forward, it will go forward away from me. Uh, and come back towards me. It's not something I actually use, but uh, I, you know, it's, it's there if that's your sort of thing. Uh, and then I've got to turn that off as well. You don't get flashing LEDs on the front of this model, by the way. Oh, we're getting low on the battery, so I've had a little bit of a play there, haven't I? So I wanted to see whether that was GPS off, didn't I? No, I think that's just the... I think that is... Yeah, I don't think that's going to change anything at all. No, <laughs> definitely still got GPS on, that's for sure. Okay, I did, oh, we've got flashing LEDs that we're running low on battery, I think, yep. I'm just going to run it over there and see whether it will return to home. Whoops. Oh, yep, it is. Yep, it's starting to return to home, I think. It's not letting me fl not letting me fly away at all. Yeah. <laughs> so it's all built in its own little geofence there that wouldn't actually let me fly any further. Oh, just Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it literally just stops at that distance. So you can change all your parameters in here, by the way. Um, there's uh, all your settings in here and I'll show you that on the next battery sort of thing you got your maps in here as well uh, and I actually usually take that one off but uh, I took it off when I was at home but it just seems to have turned it back on again you got all your settings in here for your previews and everything as well and your parameters of how far you want it to fly and then we can actually fly this actually on your app so I don't even need to take this out with me which is pretty cool 
Okay, I just got to press return to home. It just went, oh, there we go. And it's literally just popped up and it'll come back towards us. Obviously, this is more useful when you're a long way away. Ah, it's one of the unusual ones. It actually turns towards you and then flies back to you, which I always think is quite nice because if you're recording video and you've taken it over on the other side of the glen or something, and I'm really not that bothered about distance, uh, it, at least it, it's filming as it comes back into you, which I think is really nice. Some of them just come backwards towards you, so I quite like that. And that's spot on where we are. I'm never that bothered about it landed exactly where it landed. Yeah, that is literally where we took off. So. And to cancel that, you just press that again. There we go. And you got a beep, beep. And it's still worried because it's uh, low on power. You can all, uh, you can uh, press the land button. All it will do is bring it into land. Same as just taking the throttle off. So. And obviously you can hand catch and hand launch this one. Just let it settle to where it is. Grab hold of the fuselage and then just hold the throttle off and that will kill it that is really vib that back bit is really vibrating which is a real shame and it could just literally be mine had i paid money for this i would be straight back on to whoever supplied it to me uh, to sort that because that that's not right that shouldn't have come like that but um i'm yeah saying it as it is and just looking around even the wires are nicely covered in you yeah, know that's that's yeah a bit of quality in, in the assembly there uh, so yeah good stuff Okay, second battery. I'm actually going to be flying out there, but I just thought I'd show you in here. Uh, this is the sort of thing you have in Scotland. Usually the bothies are a bit better. You can sleep in here overnight, but basically nice little stove for you. Uh, there's usually a bit of wood kicking around as well. Um, and they're dotted all around the highlands of Scotland. But usually they've got a proper door and, uh, you know, the... the windows and all that sort of stuff but they're, they're basic and, and you can just use it you know to stop in overnight or you can you can actually put your tent in there or put your tent to the side of it just out in the middle of nowhere uh, that's what they tend to do in scotland and it's called a boffy so there we go we're going to fly over here now i haven't calibrated the gps i've set all everything up we're all ready to fly again i've had a little look at that uh, prop and everything I, don't, I can't see anything that's causing that vibration so whether or not there's a slight kink on the motor i don't know if they're on the uh actual shaft itself that could well be it like i say haven't calibrated over here where we flew before was about two miles in that direction so we'll just see how we get on i'll do a quick range test and then we'll uh, go on to using the actual app so i'm going to start my video and i haven't i haven't checked whether or not it does say you're supposed to calibrate it every time you fly on the actual uh uh on the a compass calibration now i disagree with that because if i'm in the middle of town or i'm near a very a lot of metal work i really don't want to be calibrating my compass because i might well not get a very good uh, calibration with it the fpv isn't bad it's not not brilliant uh, but it certainly isn't bad sort of thing so let's just take it out through there see how we get on is that camera pointing upwards yeah it is oh that's better there we go it's a pretty wide angle camera yeah, it's just, oh, it's freezing up a bit there. Cracky, I didn't think it would freeze up that quick. That's no, just about working. I'll do another, a sort of an open range test on it as well. There we go. God, it does get a bit of a move on. I'm going to pop the rates up. There we go. Yeah, we're back on now. And what distance are we? 70 metres. I tend not, I'm not really a big flyer on these sort of distances to be perfectly honest so not really that bothered well it's just doing a pirouette up there that's the back of it i can see the actual leds on it no problem at all and that's lot whoa they're really bright those i just got to bring that back in towards me yeah that's really nice actually yeah perfect yeah, that uh, the FPV is quite delayed, actually. I'm just going to whip it off. Let's just go through there. Go through there, that's nice. And then uh, we take it off for a range test that way. I've got a big lump of metal here next to me with that roof, but uh, let's just see how we get on. So it's 70 metres there. Oh, it's still holding pretty well, actually. Oh, just dropping out at about 100 metres. It's still going forward. I can see it's still going forward. Uh, there we go so you could just press the return to home um uh, oh we come back on that's pretty impressive yeah yeah no we're back on again that's 130 odd meters let's just pitch it in a bit more see how much further we get 
So you could line up a shot that distance. It really doesn't interest me at all, guys. I'm really sorry. I know some people really want to, you know, this is what they live for, how far they can fly the drone away. I really disagree with it. It's, to me, it's just fine, you know. Um, 190 meters, that's saying. I'm just gonna see if I can go out any further. Yeah, no, it's still holding as well. Just, just, yeah, it's pretty, pretty poor. If I rotate it around, I'm just wondering if I can see those LEDs from here, actually. Because you're getting any problems and you can't see it at all, all you have to do is just press the return to home, which is what I'm actually going to do next. There we go. So I'm just going to press return to home. So we're just on 200 meters there. The FPV has gone off. Oh yeah, I can see the LEDs as clear as anything now. So it's still not come back on on the FPV. Some of them don't come back on until literally you're over the top of you, which is pretty useless, I sort of think. Uh, this one hmm, could well be that way. <laughs> That's probably less than 100 meters away now, I would say, I'm guessing. Yeah. Yeah, that is quite getting quite close, actually. Probably 60 meters away. That's cool. Whoops, oh, oh and it just it's just slowed down because it's getting close to where it took off from. Whoa, that hasn't gone back on, but it is telling me it's 18 meters away, so hmm. That's very strange. And then we took off from here. I'm not gonna bother with all that. I just really want to get out and fly again. Um, so it's really interesting that it has actually gone, you know, still hasn't got it sort of thing. Oh there we go, we're back on now. But that's like I say, it's pretty pathetic really. I'm gonna cancel that out of there. Now I'm gonna hmm. I do what shall I just let I'm just gonna turn off the transmitter. I'm gonna turn this on for these controls. And I'll just gonna turn off the transmitter. If it flies away, I've done basically the review, I think. There we go. So now we're fully on this one here. Ooh. There we go, now it is working. Didn't think it was gonna do anything for a second there. That's fine. Hey, so you can actually fly it on the transmitter, on the sorry, on the uh, phone, which isn't too bad really. Well, actually, it's not a bad little flyer. It's a little bit jerky for me, but then I've got pretty cold hands. I've been out on the hill for <laughs> a wee while, so. But yeah, look at that. It's doing its job. Yeah, nice. That's doing a good little job. That's actually pretty cool. I'm putting a flip button on it next. <laughs> right, let's have a look. Oh, you can do a surround uh, on here as well, which is exactly the same as we did on the other one. Um, let's try some points of uh, where it's going to go. Oh, no, this is the follow me one, isn't it? Yep. Whoa, there we go. There we go. So I'll press the wrong one there. Sorry, it's follow me. Oh, this is a really great environment for it to follow me. Oh, wait, it's doing it as well. Well, it's following me. That's actually doing quite a good job. I think you should be able to descend it as well. Yeah, so you can. Is that still working? Yep. Oh, no. Yeah. Yes, it is. Whoops. <laughs> yeah, no, that's actually working pretty good. Ha! Just going to give the waypoints a a uh, quick test, see how we get on with it. So, I'm calibrated the GPS again because I'm just going to see whether or not it can handle it. Let's just start that video off running. And as you can see, we've got quite a bit of a breeze because she's not sat level. And this back end again is just wobbling like that. I did have a quick look at it, I managed to sort it, so I can get rid of it like that. <laughs> I don't really want to hang on to it. Oh, I don't know, it could go flying. Right, let's just see how we get on with these waypoints, whether they are working or not, or whether or not I've just uh, wasted my time with it. So it's going to go into maps. And I thought if I came here, I've got some roads around, so I actually got a bit of a scale there for it. So I'm going to use the waypoints here. There we go. So it is actually working. So yeah, the waypoints do work. What I'll do is fly up to its point, point one, and then it should go off on its own little course. We can alter the speed and everything of the waypoints here. Let's have a look at the uh, parameters, and then we can just put that in 
there and uh, we're putting a three and then we have done and we can alter the height and everything of what we're doing and as you can see it's sort of turned around now and it'll just go on its merry little way maximum height of waypoints minimum height of waypoints as well and we can just actually edit each one so we can put in the time and the stay time and what the speed is going to be so we can up that on every single one and you just simply go around and program them all in so let's give it a bit of speed on here there we go and it's going off doing its merry thing i'm still not a big fan of it i must admit but um, at least it works on this one as well did have a play around with the maps to see whether or not i could change it for um for satellite maps and it doesn't seem to want to do that at all so i tried it it changes but actually when i come back to the map i don't actually get the satellite i've tried zooming it up and down as well makes no difference whatsoever so i still think this is under development like i say and there you can see it's gradually traveling along uh, the points uh, let's just see whether i can up that speed to do it at six miles oh <laughs> wow <laughs> six miles an hour it's not really sounding much is it Okay, going to run some onboard footage for you so you actually see what the quality is like at full screen and then I'll just run my summary as I'm doing it. Now, the vibration that I was getting is definitely in this arm. I changed all uh, the props over um, and I've tried it a few things. I haven't stripped it all down. Um, I haven't really got the time to do that, to be perfectly honest. And actually, it's given me the opportunity of saying, look, these manufacturers produce thousands, if not tens of thousands of these things. And occasionally one comes out of the factory that is a little bit wrong. And that's what's happened here. There's something in here that's giving that wobble. I would imagine the, the motor's got a tiny little kink in the actual motor shaft, and it's just put in that bit of wobble, which is quite drastic on the back. So I was surprised how good the footage was for what it was with the uh, jello running through it it really wasn't that bad um i've seen a lot worse to be perfectly honest now what i would do if i bought this i would uh, do a quick uh, video literally a few seconds video showing all the vibration on it and i would get it straight back to the people who supplied me not the manufacturer the actual supplier and the, in this case it's banggood and then they should send out another unit um so that's that's what i would be doing but it's given me the opportunity i think to sort of say look they do come out of the factory like this now it's up to the 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 uh, reseller uh, to actually get it sorted for you so and hopefully yours won't come with that yours will be absolutely jello free so what do i think of the whole thing apart from that well it's obviously aimed directly at cloning the Mavic Air but look at the price and it's virtually a tenth of the price you've got lots of options on this as well so I put some the link down in description once you click through to that you can have a one battery two battery three battery you can have a 720p camera you don't have to have the 5g uh, wi-fi setup or anything so there's lots of lots of options uh, to get the price down if it's something that you're really after the actual build of it is really nice as I said with sort of braided uh, uh, cable covers as well which is a nice little touch actually trying it and it does it feels pretty good for what it is for the price I think it's actually pretty good the camera uh, lens looks better than the quality that came out of it I thought but I've been caught by that several times uh, I've seen worse 1080p ones and I've seen a lot better 1080p ones so uh, only you can judge and that's why I put the, the footage now so you can have a look the lens distortion is horrific uh, and again that happens on cheaper models with cheaper lenses and I'm just being honest on the channel if you start to point the lens down you looks like you're getting the curvature of the earth you literally if you have a look at some of the footage there it literally goes like a a dome or a barrel uh, and that's just just the way they've set the lens up so it's probably yeah there's not a lot of money in there if you keep it nice and level then there's no problem with it it seems to work pretty good the uh, actual build I haven't had any accidents with it actually and uh, I think it would take a few uh, shunts as well without any problems comes with four prop guards and they're pretty decent ones you just click them in there and then there's a couple of screws you put in there and then they're going to protect it up new to flying definitely recommend those or if you're flying indoors though I wouldn't actually recommend this would be the best indoor flyer if you do fly indoors you're not going to get the gps so it's not going to hold position so uh, just be aware of that you, in the box you get a couple of spare props and a little a phillips screwdriver which you could strip it all down with you get a spare set of screws as well the uh, battery is a 1200 milliamp hour like i said and you get a usb charger for it uh, it simply plugs in uh, through the balanced charger port there 
Uh, that takes about uh, two hours to charge up using this method. Uh, the way I would do it, and I'll put a link down in description, these are about seven quid. I've done a full review on these actually, I'll put a link to that as well. Get yourself one of these cables, I'll put a link to these. They're about two quid I think to buy, and all it is is just an, an adapter extension cable that you plug into there, and then you can plug it into any uh, of your uh, batteries like this. Uh, and they do a uh, uh, three cell one as well and then it will charge it up in the in an hour so to me the, yeah for seven quid that's definitely worth it and also any other rc stuff that you've got two or three cell that you can charge through a balanced charger port this will do it as well so a good little investment for you once you get one of these you are going to be moving into it i can assure you the uh transmitter worked really well and though i could fly it on the phone and there was nothing wrong with that i think i would always just bung this in my rucksack as well i love the uh, surround or orbit uh, functions on this and i think it works really well uh, i've done loads of other ones just recently with that function on and i'll put links down in description for you range i got way over 200 meters on it they give 300 i've got no reason to disbelieve that but the wi-fi goes out uh, uh, at about 100 it starts to really drop out and then occasionally it pops back up when you get around the 150 to 200 mark uh, but it's you certainly couldn't fly you'd have a job even lining up a shot to be honest because it, it gets so intermittent so up to 80 100 meters i would say fine and to me that's absolutely fine all i want to do is take it out on the hills, uh, do a little bit of flying around, uh, do an, an orbit, uh, and then bung it in my rucksack and carry on to the next bit. The flight time I was getting was maximum I got was 12 minutes, and sometimes it was 10 minutes. Um, I would say maximum 12. They give 16 minutes. I never got anything like that at all. The uh, actual buttons and functions on this worked every single time. I didn't have any issues with it at all as well. So there we go, for, for the money I think it's pretty reasonable but only you can decide uh, what you're going to spend your kids inheritance on uh, and I do hope you've enjoyed that one and I look forward to seeing you on the next. Mm -hmm.